Hi, this is Dan with Woodland Forestry Products. Uh, we're located in Argyle, Wisconsin. Um, I've been on YouTube and looked for good videos of, of assembly of the Woodland Mill Sawmill. And, and I've seen some good ones out there, but I thought I'd do my own today. Uh, being a dealer here in the U.S., I've put together a lot of these things and I've learned a lot of tricks along the way to getting them to cut well and, and save you some time while we're putting them together. Um, so we're going to do a start to finish assembly today. We'll be in and out. I'm not going to bore you with all the different types of nuts and bolts and, and unpackaging this thing. But uh, we'll, we'll cut back in and out on the important parts of the assembly. And, and hopefully uh, we can we can save a few issues. I noticed on uh, on YouTube or on the Facebook pages that once in a while a person has trouble getting uh, the blades to stay on, and that's simply a matter of setting them up right to begin with. So today we're going to set it up on this custom trailer uh, that I have here, and this is not a promo for the trailer. I do sell these, but. Uh, um, it, it's just faster for me to put it together on, on this trailer. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll start unpacking this thing and then we'll show you what it all looks like after it comes out of the crate. And uh, we'll be back shortly. Uh, before we uh, get started unpacking the mill, I laid out all the tools that I use to assemble these. Uh, starting on this end, I, I normally have four bar clamps. I only got two of them sitting here right now. You can see them. A um, bunch of metric sockets, a cordless impact, uh, a variety of vice grips that I use to hold the track in place while I'm bolting it together. Uh, metric wrenches, uh, 10 millimeters up to uh, 24 millimeters. Uh, adjustable wrench, uh, screwdrivers, some extensions that I use for a variety of things. A lot of times just to temporarily uh, hold something in place until I get a bolt in there. I slide one of them instead, helps me line things up. Some smaller um, sockets for working on the sawmill. Um, of course, we got to have lunch. Um, and I use a nylon strap in a chain and these are some spacers that I've I've made especially for the HM130 uh, all three mills the setup is the same on them for the most part um, it's just you have to have different spacers for the different mills these will go in the track in between the tracks and they make sure that I'm, I'm perfect on the width with the, putting those spacers in there and then putting a bar clamp on there um, I always get exactly the width that I want. So we'll go start unpacking the mill. We'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back. Uh, we got most of it uncrated. Um, we, when I pull a saw head out, I, I use a nylon strap. I know the directions tell you to lay it on its face, but this is how I do it uh, because I have a forklift and I have the ability to pick it out of the crate this way. It speeds it along for me and I don't have to lay it on the face. So I'll partially assemble it now enough to get it to where it stands alone and then we'll move to the track before we finish assembling this. So with the crate unpacked with everything except the, the track system and the bunks, we still got two boxes in the bottom of the crate. Here's all the parts.
Okay, we're back. Uh, we're all unpacked. Um, the saw head is partially assembled, which you have to do um, to get to all your all your track. And so this is how I like to put together a track. Um, I have pre-cut spacers to go in between, but on the HM130 it needs to be 37 inches outside to outside, and then I have four of them, one on each joint and one on each end, and then I like to put bar clamps on them, and then I have a center line marked down each one of them so that I can wiggle things back and forth. Um, and when everything's all lined up, then I go through and tighten all the bolts. Now you could do this with a ground setup as well, um, but you really got nothing to hold it sideways. But sideways isn't critical on a ground mount. It isn't really critical on a trailer either, but um, seeing how we have a nice straight surface, we like to make them as perfect as we can. So the string is running right down the center line on all of them. We're all ready to tighten this down. Uh, we'll tighten them down and we'll start putting the gussets and the bunks on. See you soon. Okay, so we're back again. Um, we've got the saw head assembled. We have the track completed. Uh, we started this at about nine o'clock this morning. It's now 12.57. We're getting ready to put the saw head on the track. Uh, we lost an hour because we had to go pull my dad out of the snowbank. But uh, we're back on track again now. So one thing I like to do before I put these on the track is check the sweepers on the wheels because they always seem to come a little bit long and, and they're kind of a bugger to adjust. So I have a cable cutter that I look at each one 
and see if it's hanging below the wheel. And I see this one, it's just slightly below the wheel. So you can either adjust it here, loosen it up, but that takes a lot of hands to do, or you can just nip it off with either a side grinder or a cutting disc, or a cable cutter like so, which is quick and easy. And I'll do the same thing on this other one. This one needs a little more trimmed off. Otherwise, when you set your mill on the track, and it doesn't roll very good, that's because it's sitting on top of that sweeper. Yeah, nailed it. Okay, so we'll get her on there and we'll be back with you. Well, we now have the saw head sitting on the track and we have rolled it back and forth a number of times. Um, so we're sure that it's nice and smooth and that it, all four wheels are rolling all the time down the track. There's no rocking anywhere in it. And then once we get to that point, we, we check, make a couple of, of quick checks before we tighten everything down. Keep in mind everything that needs to be loose when you set it on here and the track is what sets the positioning of the mill. Uh, the two of them kind of become married together after you've rolled it back and forth a few times. But one thing I like to check is that the saw head is plumb on the track uh, before I tighten everything down. So I, I put a level on each side, as you'll see here, and this one's perfectly plumb. And, and another quick thing I like to check is, is the, the blade, that the blade sits level in here too. Uh, if, if you got a wavy cut down the road, there's a good chance your blade is tilted. And uh, you know, it, it'll cut pretty straight when you got a sharp blade, but as the blade dulls, uh, you want to give it every chance you can to cut straight. Uh, otherwise, it'll tend to wander on you. It'll try to pull itself up or pull itself down if you don't have that thing real close to being perfectly level. Um, so I'm going to tighten everything down on it, and uh, then, then we'll start going over some of the adjustments that I like to make um, that, that hopefully will benefit uh, uh, some of you who are watching this today. So I'll be back shortly. All right, we now have the, the cutter uh, assembly opened up so we can inspect it and take a quick look and, and see if there's anything that stands out right off the bat uh, that we're gonna need to adjust before we move forward. So on first opening, one of the first things I check is I'll come over to the, the wheels and reach behind and feel where the blade is riding in comparison to the wheels. This one's sticking back about an eighth inch behind the back of the wheel. I've already checked the one on the other side and that one's pretty close to the same, maybe a sixteenth back. Uh, the other thing that I, I really recommend checking right off the bat is 
the drive belt and its relationship to where it's riding on the idler wheel. Um, this has been a, a thing that is, is thrown a few people off because every now and then this idler wheel is out of adjustment ever so slightly, but a little bit of adjustment will, will make the belt wander back and forth on that wheel. And if it wanders far enough, it will start wearing on the belt on the side because it's pulling the belt sideways uh, on whichever side that the, the idler wheel is steering it. So how to check that is you spin the belt forward and backward. And you can see that this belt is moving, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe. Let me see if I can get a better angle on that. Yeah. And it's an easy adjustment to adjust it. Um, I can actually get it better here. Um, you will see that when I go in this direction, it goes right, goes in a little bit. And when I spin it backwards, it moves out a little bit. So I'm gonna make an adjustment on that wheel. And it's as easy as loosening this bolt up, this bolt up right here and tapping on, on the idler to get it in line with the other pulleys. I've now made the adjustment on this, this idler pulley, uh, loosening that bolt and tapping on the back. And, and you should see now when I spin it, that that belt stays really close to being in the exact same spot forward and reverse. It could maybe move us uh, just a skosh, but um, you want it real close or like I say, it'll start steering that belt one way or the other. And it's so simple to adjust, just an 18 millimeter wrench on here or socket and then a hammer and all I did was tap it right here a little bit, very lightly and then tightened it back up and then tested it again. And now I'm real happy with how this idler is on, on this machine. So we'll get ready for the next uh, thing that I'd like to show you. All right, now we're gonna talk tracking. Tracking is critical to keeping the blades on the mill. Tracking means how this blade rides with relationship to the wheel. And for a properly tracked sawmill, the blade should be running flush with the back of the wheel, the back of the blade with the back of, of the sawmill wheel. The, the place where people get into trouble a lot of times is with the guides. The guides should have zero effect on how the blade tracks on the wheels. In other words, there should always be a small gap between the guides and the blade. The guides are only there for when you're sawing. They're not there for when you're, when, when it's just sitting there idle or, or yeah. So how, how we, first thing we should do when we start tracking a mill is get the guides totally out of the way. And then with the blade tension uh, being cranked on the side, we spin over the, the wheels and we, if your guides are hitting, you will hear it. And you can, you can see here if I shut up long enough that you won't hear anything. So that tells me that the, the guides are not affecting the blade in any way. Um, this one came out of the crate track perfectly. I really don't have to adjust it on this side. The wheel on the other side was a little bit farther back than I like it. Uh, I did make an adjustment on it. And you will notice on the adjuster on the back side of that wheel, it says do not adjust. And I don't recommend that anybody adjust it unless they have woodland mills on the phone with them talking it through it. The problem is if people start playing with these and they get them way out of whack, it becomes very difficult for woodland mills or myself to talk you through it over the telephone. Uh, you know, it's easy to fix if we're there in person, but, but most people are trying to solve their problem over the phone. So we highly recommend that nobody ever touch that wheel unless it's absolutely necessary. 
And this one here, you need to learn how to, to, to adjust. And it, it's a simple idea. If you want to move the blade forward on the wheel, you got to take the wheel and twist it this way. Okay, if you want to move the blade back on the wheel, you got to twist the wheel this way. And that's all done through a bolt on the back. And I'll try to take you there quick. Now, bear with me. So, first of all, we talked about our blade tension. And the blade tension is done, you know, the book goes over all of this, but the blade tension is all done when, when this bearing is flush with this spacer right here. So right now it's too loose as we crank it in, and I will wipe some of that excess grease off, but they put a little extra on when it's in the crate. Okay, so that, that right there is a perf perfectly tensioned saw blade. Now onto the tracking. Okay, if, if we wanna just out on the wheel, meaning we want the blade to go forward, we need to rock the shaft so that we're rocking the wheel this way. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, and if we want the blade to move back on the wheel, we gotta go this way. And so it's all done by adjusting these two bolts to move forward on the wheel. It's out on this bolt, which will will let that, that shaft rock. So little tiny turns, it's good to take some tension off while you're making the adjustment, but you gotta put the tension back on when you're checking the tracking. Um, so if we say we want the blade to move in, the good rule of thumb is in on this bolt is in, out on this bolt is out. But for every adjustment you make on this bolt, you gotta make the same adjustment on this bolt to keep it tight in there. So you loosen this one, tighten this one. Okay, so now we're gonna relook at our blade now that I've got the guides opened up. Um, and you can see that this blade is quite a bit out of level. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an adjustment here uh, to get the blade level. Uh, the saw will cut like, just like it is, and, and it'll probably cut fine. Um, but as the blade gets dull, it's more likely to wander because you can see the front of the blade is tipped up. Uh, you know, it looks like a lot on that, but it's a little level, so it's really not, not a whole lot. You can see that just by, by touching the blade, I can bring it in. But seeing how this is a new saw, I'm going to make it perfect right off the bat. And this is something I check periodically, especially if you get a wavy cut you, and you got a sharp blade and it's, it's wandering either goofy when you enter into the log with the saw blade or you come out of the log and she kind of kind of jumps up or down a little bit as you go in or out. Um, there's a good chance your blade is out of level. You can do a number of things to level it. But seeing how this is a new saw, on, on the back side, we already know that my posts are, my vertical posts are plumb. We, we can loosen these two bolts, or actually there's four of them because you got two on each side. You loosen them up and you can tilt this whole assembly here, forward or back, and you can do it in, in a, with everything that tilts, the motor will tilt with that. So, so you want to try to make this plumb with the posts, and, and hopefully that, that adjustment right there, I'm going to loosen this up and rock the top of this forward just a hair, and, and we'll see how that affects the blade. So I'm going to loosen some bolts up and, and move things around and see what happens. All right. So I loosen the four bolts on the back and I wiggle the head around a little bit. And you can see we've got that blade just where we want it. Once again, I'll walk around behind and I'll show you those four bolts that I loosened. So there's two on each side. It takes two 13 millimeter wrenches, but you gotta, you gotta loosen it here and then hold the bolt head on the other side. Same thing here and here. And then, then there's 
two more over here. And, and when I loosened them, it actually moved all by itself, kind of where it wanted to be. But you can pull it around so you get that blade level. And I'll guarantee you, if you get that blade level, your saw is going to be a really happy saw. So now I'm going to tighten those bolts, and then we'll come back and move on to the next thing. Next thing we're going to do is adjust the, the guides. And, and looking at these guides, right off the bat, I can tell you they're pretty close to where I want them. Um, and, and they came out of the crate that way. But having said that, hopefully I can get a, a, a picture of this, this guide bearing back here. From this angle, it looks pretty close, but when you really get your head in there and you look at it, it's back over an eighth of an inch. So what we're gonna have to do is loosen this bolt up and slide it ahead. Now we wanna leave at, at least 20 thousandths probably between there, but I, I do everything by look. I know some people use the feeler gauge, but I basically want them almost as tight as I can get them without them touching. So um, I'm not gonna have to adjust the pucks, which are these little hardened steel pucks in here on this one. I probably will after it's been run for a while. Um, but but I'm gonna gonna leave them where they're at and let it run in for a while, let the belt settle in and see where the blade ends up after it's been run a while. Uh, one other thing I should mention um, while we're here is belt tension. And so you got your drive belt and, and you got to keep this drive belt tight all the time. And it's a simple adjustment. It's, it's a 24 millimeter here. You got to put a 24 millimeter, which is the same as a 15 16 wrench on the back side of that one. 13 millimeter here, you loosen it up and you get it loose. You can squeeze it by hand, tighten, tighten this one back up and then tighten this one up at the end again. But a new belt always stretches. So after an hour or so, on, It'll probably come tight out of the crate, which this one is, but a new belt always stretches. So after an hour or so, check your belt. You may have to tighten it. After a day, check your belt. You may have to tighten it. After two days, same thing. But at some point, the belt quits stretching. And, and then, then you just gotta check it periodically after that. But for the first few days, you need to keep checking that belt because new belts always stretch. So I'm going to make an adjustment on this guide. Um, maybe if I come behind here, you can see the gap in there. And, and I definitely want that, that guide, that bearing closer to that blade than that. You see it's over an eighth of an inch and I want it tighter than that. So I'm going to loosen that bolt slide of the head and I'll be back with you shortly. We now have the gauge or the guides adjusted uh, pretty much well exactly the way I want them. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about, well we won't talk about him. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is your throttle. Um, with with a 14 horse collar and a sawmill this size and a centrifugal clutch, it is absolutely critical you get every RPM out of this motor that you can get. And the governor will keep it from giving you too many RPMs, so it's up to you to get it up to where the governor kicks in. So out of the crate, the throttle cable will come assembled real loose. And if you look at where my thumb is, that's where it was when it came out of the crate. By the time I got the handle assembly put together, you got to come through and you got to loosen this, this bolt which has a Phillips head on it. You gotta, you gotta get the cable all lined up the way you want it, and then you gotta slide this ahead to tighten it, and then retighten the Phillips head screw. Now, one thing I always do right out of the crate is I loosen these two 916 bolts right here on top. That's a bracket that holds your auto lube, and it's possible if that bracket is in the wrong place that this throttle will come over, hit your auto lube paddle, and if, it, if you haven't got enough room, this can restrict your RPMs or your throttle on the, on the motor. So, so the first thing I do before I set one up is I loosen these two 916 bolts and slide this bracket over 
So it's more in the center of the adjusters because they always come adjusted all the way to the right. And often when they're all the way to the right, they will restrict your full throttle. So loosen them, just move them over a little bit, tighten them back up. Bottom line is so long as this lever comes over, hits this paddle and opens the valve for the auto lube, uh, you're good. I mean, it, but, but if this is too far over and all of a sudden this paddle is restricting the throttle, uh, you're not going to be very happy with how it saws. The faster you can get the motor running, the better, the happier you're going to be sawing with it. Uh, the other thing is if you don't have full throttle on it, your clutch isn't engaging completely and you'll prematurely wear the clutch out. So make, spend the time, make sure you're getting full throttle on it. There's one way to tell if you're getting it, if you're achieving it. When you start the sawmill, and I'll probably show this to you after I fill it with oil and start it. Um, you can you can pull the hand or you can pull the throttle lever over here like so and while the machine is running you take your other hand and come over here to this hand wheel you'll see what that hand lever does when I pull the throttle okay well you, you can you can pull it here and then when it's already all the way over there you can reach over with the engine running and you'll hear it running. And if you push on this hard to the left and you're getting more throttle, you know you got to make some more adjustments. So full throttle is key on these. And the next thing I'm, I'm going to talk about is on the HM130, we have electric start. And there's a battery box that goes right here. Uh, do not put that battery box on until after you've got your battery cables attached. Your battery cables go up in here and with the box in the way, it's just really hard to get your fingers in there. So you'll have a ground wire. The ground wire will go here and then it'll go up into the battery box to the negative on the battery. And I'll walk around and show you the front where your positive cable goes. And a lot of guys complain about how difficult this is to get it on there. Um, and hopefully I can get a decent view of it. Okay, so here's where your positive cable goes. Hopefully you can see that. And then it looks like it's a little out of focus, um, but there's a red spade connector right next to it. That spade connector, I always pull it off. Let me see if I can get this focused. I always pull it off and flip it 180 degrees because then a lot of this connector portion is no longer in the way of this, this stud right here where you got to get your cable on. So pull that off first with a needle nose pliers, flip it over and put it back on, and then you can more easily get to this nut. The battery cable, the positive battery cable has two different ends and some people don't realize that. Make sure you put the end with the small hole on it here. The big end goes on the battery. But that's just a tip that can save you some time when you're putting this on. Do not put that battery box on until you have those cables attached because you can't get your hand in here once the battery box is on. Other people complain that they can't get to the filler cap for the oil. Uh, which which you really can't once the battery box is in, but it doesn't matter because you got another one over here that does the same thing and you'll use that one. So, okay, so the next thing I'll do is set my height adjustment. And bottom line is that blade should be the exact same distance off the bunk on one side as it is on the other side. And I've already set it um, on this one but it's, it's all done with your turnbuckles on your, on your adjuster. And they're very easy to adjust, especially if you, you set it all the way down. So you crank it down and then these cables become loose. And then you can just by hand spin the nuts until you get it right where you want it. And you can, then you gotta crank it up naturally and put tension on it. Um, but when you, you can sit there and crank up and down and play with it, measure side to side till you get it exact and then make sure you lock the, the, you know, the lock nuts together so it doesn't move in the future. But once you've got that set, it'll probably be good for, 
for maybe forever. Um, but you want to get it so it's exactly the same distance. And so I'll take a tape measure, measure off of the bunk to the center of the blade on both sides and I want it exact. There's also an adjustment for your bare minimum and that's this bolt right here. So the minimum is supposed to be one inch on these. You could probably go just a shade less if you wanted, but you adjust this bolt down so it lands down here. And, and when that's all set, when you got the saw set at one inch, then these two should be touching and you shouldn't in theory be able to go any lower than that. And it's nice to know that number. So you, when you're, when you're sawing, um, you, you know, you got a one inch minimum, you know, your, your log stop's got to be at least an inch or below an inch high, um, on that last board. So if you keep them, uh, lower than an inch in theory, you can never hit them with the blade. And one other thing I should mention when you are, uh, working with these, these turnbuckles, the cable end slides right over this but make sure you get this tightened and take your time and make sure you don't cross thread it. And if you forget to tighten it, I guarantee you it'll vibrate itself loose. And when it does, this whole thing will open up. So make sure you put a 10 millimeter wrench on, on this and, and tighten both of them, but don't over tighten them. Um, because if you over tighten them, you can strip them up. But just make sure they're good and snug and then you shouldn't have any problem with them. Okay, back again. Um, we have the battery box in, the battery cables are on. Hopefully you can see that. I, I do know that people struggle with that battery cable. It took me maybe 10 minutes to put both of them on. Uh, but you have, keep in mind when you're working with metrics, anytime you see a smaller bolt, it's probably a 10 millimeter. So if you've got a 10 millimeter socket to get on that nut, um, and here's that spade connector that I turned around. Okay, it's red with a blue, the connector's red, but the wire is blue. That used to face the other way with the wire going out the other side, which makes it really tricky to get that on there. Now, one other thing you should keep in mind is when you pull that nut off before you slide the cable on there, there's a washer and a lock washer on there. And there is no way you're going to fit those two washers back on. Just pull them off and put the nut right over the connector. Make it nice and tight, but don't over tighten it. That, that uh, stud is brass or copper and, and it will strip. So just snug and, and make sure you don't cross thread it when you start. Take your time with this one. Uh, you'll be glad you did. Um, now, I don't have a battery in the box yet, uh, but um, you know this thing has recoil start on it. So if I decide I wanna run it here directly, I still gotta fill it with gas and oil and I gotta put a couple little latches on the bottom that, that go in the door here that, that uh, keep everything nice and snug while you're sawing. And uh, you're gonna love those little latches. Those are a riot, because they got these tiny little screws and nuts. Um, and for an old man with old hands, um, that, that I save them for last because it's my least favorite thing to do on these. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll get that all done. We'll uh, get her filled with gas and oil and and i feel confident uh, i think we're going to have a great run and saw here and uh, we'll see you in a bit when we start it up and we can walk through some of the motor adjustments uh, and how to start these things so see you in a okay we're reaching the finish line uh we filled her with gas and oil uh, ethanol free gas. Uh, the rating on the motor is up for t up to 10 percent, but uh, most small engine guys recommend no ethanol. I highly recommend no ethanol in these uh, small motors. So um, I don't have a battery in it yet, but uh, because it has recoil start, I think we'll pull it over and see what it runs like. Um, everything looks good. So Kohler motors like to be choked, so this top lever here, hopefully you can see that as a choke. 
The bottom lever is fuel on and off and engine kill, um, but we also have electric start here, so we need to have the key switch on on this one, full start. So if it's like most of the colder motors that I've started in the past, uh, nine and a half horse always starts on the first pull, the 14 horse always starts on the second. So let's see what happens. We'll let it warm up a little bit. The idle sounds about right. Maybe a shade across. Because we pull started it, uh, we can either shut it off with the key switch or the kill switch too. Or maybe you can't shut it off with the kill switch. I guess because it's electric start, you have to use the key switch. So um, yeah, this is going to be a, this is a very nice running saw. I can tell already. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I think that's probably a wrap to the video here. If you want to watch people cutting with these things. Uh, there are plenty of uh, good good videos out there, and I personally like watching them better than I like sawing sometimes because I don't have to clean up any sawdust afterwards. Um, but hopefully this video um, it will help some of you, and it's been informative, and I, I appreciate you watching it, and have a great day.